But as we kept moving the earth on this site, I realized that nobody had ever built anything on that site. Uh, and that is more than amazing, which led me to believe that the Lord preserved that site. If you bump into anything by way of archaeological ruins, any remnants of anything, everything stops in that country. Whenever you find any antiquities, you immediately call in the archaeologists and it might delay any project for years or indefinitely. There was nothing there. I watched it. I was there day after day, week after week for all the months of preparing the site for the building to go up. The Lord preserved that spot for the future site. He knew anciently that we would be building there. Okay, there's the first uh, part of the wall that went up all the way around the site. We got to keep certain people in and certain people out uh, while they were building. They cut away from the uh, designer's plans, and by the way, the architects were um, David Resnick from Jerusalem and Frank Ferguson from Salt Lake City. Um, they worked together on this project. And Frank uh, did a lot of things with glass. He did the uh, uh, Ravenel Hall and, and uh, extension of BYU Stadium and Tanner Building. And he's done a lot of things around here, but this was one of his greatest in his life's work. Uh, but I was amazed as I watched them. Now, this is not an eight-story structure straight on top of each other. It's eight levels terraced down the hillside. Okay? And they knew exactly just how to cut it <laughs> to start the building. Now, here's an interesting question that comes up. God, I keep getting in front of everybody. Um, we don't know about earthquakes before they happen, Right? But we've known about an earthquake that's going to hit the Mount of Olives for over 2,500 years. It's right in your Old Testament, book of Zechariah and others. There's going to be an earthquake there. And so I asked the foreman, the construction people, not facetiously, but seriously, what are we doing to secure our building because it's going to be moving in the future? And you're looking at the answer. All the levels of that center were put on over 400 micropiles sunk 35 to 50 feet into the earth at precise intervals so that, here's one of them, <laughs> so that when the building moves, not if, but when, it'll all move together, stay solid. I mean, our students there, whenever this second coming happens, they're going to have front row seats to the second coming. You know, we don't want to lose any students. So we want to keep that building intact. <clears throat> There's the first scaffolding going up on the site. The first two rooms in the center. This is going to be a 125,000 square foot building. The first two rooms were the bomb shelters. According to Israeli law, every public building that houses people has to have bomb shelter space in case it's ever needed for uh, the amount of people that uh, live or work in that place. Well, those bomb shelters have already been used. If you remember back in 91 when those Scud missiles were flying from Saddam Hussein over Israel and landing out on the coast. They flew right over the Jerusalem center. Our students were gone at that point, but our administrators are still there. Spent several nights with those funny looking gas masks on in case they had uh, chemical things with them in our bomb shelters. But now the bomb shelters have the washers and dryers and ping pong tables and things like that. We, we don't waste the space, but in case it needs to be used.